Okay, so far we have looked at two APIs, value and constant, which are more or less the same. And they let you share primitives, they let you share objects, they let you share functions. With that, are we done? We have everything we need, right? These are the common JavaScript constructs and you have everything you need to share all the common JavaScript constructs. Are we done? Well, there is a lot you can do with value and constants, but there are some advanced APIs that you might sometimes need. So here's the limitation of having a value declaration, and this applies to constants as well. You notice here that the value, which is the second argument, has to be in line. So here you see this is an object that has to be in line. Here is a function that has to be in line. You know, we, earlier we had a string that happened to be in line. Your first argument is your name. The second argument has to be the value itself. What if you have a scenario where you don't have the value right away. You need to execute some function to prepare the object that is set as the value, right? So let's say this is not something that's available in line. Instead, I need to execute some logic to prepare this object and then return it and have that be the value, you know, the, um, the service, right? You can do that by using this new API called the factory. So we've seen the value service and we've seen the constant service. So there is this third API for creating these shared data and that's the factory service. So how does a factory service work? So you say app dot factory. And again, you create, you give it a name. Let's say I call it app data factory service. The name really doesn't matter. Now the second argument here is not the object itself in line. It's not the value itself in line. The second argument is going to be a function that when executed is going to return the value that you need to set over here, right? So let's say you want to set the value as, um, I don't know, hello. Let's say this is a string. Hello. This works if this is value, right? It just takes the second argument and then sets it to this. But if it's a factory, you don't specify the value here. You specify a function that is going to return the value that you need. So in this case, it would be function and then return hello. All right, so this is the factory way of doing things. And compared to this, this seems to be like a roundabout way, isn't it? Instead of having a value directly, you give a function which returns the value. But the advantage of this approach is you can write code here to do anything you want, right? You can have a lot of complex logic over here, which executes whatever you need. And then at the end, you return a prepared object. And that prepared object is gonna be this service, all right? So it can get really powerful. I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna say return uh, hello from factory service. And now I can inject this over here. I'm just going to do this in the header. I don't need this in the footer. And uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this. Don't need it. I'm going to say console.log. I'm going to print the value that I injected. What's the value that I injected? App data factory service. The value is not the function. The value is the return of this function call, which will be hello from factory service. So what Angular is gonna do is when it sees this factory declaration, it's gonna expect a second argument to be a function. It's gonna call this function, and it's gonna see what it returns. That return value, whatever you return, is gonna get set as the service value. And app data factory service, when it's injected, is gonna be this return value, all right? Now I have that printed over here. Now I'm going to reload the page, and here you see the hello from factory service gets returned. So that is the value of the service. And again, like with the other stuff, you can return object itself. So I'm going to return this object, which is gonna be the return value. I'm gonna format the code a bit. So this is the factory. Factory takes in the second argument, which is a function that needs to be executed for the value to be returned. And whatever that function returns is gonna get assigned as the value here. So now what I can do is, over here, I'm gonna remove this. What I need is app data factory service dot name rather than app data service dot name, although both have the same value at this point of time. I'm gonna refresh the page 
and still see contact. So this is the factory service. So I talked about one advantage of a factory service being you can have a function to prepare the value versus the value service where you have to put the value here. Well, if you think about it, it's not exactly a difference. You can actually have a function that returns this object and have it executed rather than providing the function itself. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So let me take this function out and um, create it over here. Say function prepare app config. All right, it's a simple function which does this stuff. Pretty much what we've done here, right? It's a simple function over here. Now, what I can do over here in the app.factory is put that function instead of having a function in line and it's going to work, right? I'm passing in a function just like I did before. Rather than have it be inline, I'm referencing a function object. But now here's the thing. This can kind of work in the value too. So rather than have it be an inline object, I can actually call this function. Now when I call this function, what's going to happen? JavaScript interpreter is going to execute this function, get the return value, and that's what's the second argument, right? It's not Angular, it's just pure JavaScript. If any function argument is actually another function call, it's going to execute that function, get that object, and assign it. So in a in that sense, both app.value and app.factory can accommodate a function execution. So we can have this kind of complicated logic get executed and the return value assigned. It's just that in the factory example, you're passing the function itself. In the value case, you're executing the function, so the return value is what gets assigned. This is the difference, right? So, well, then can we just do with value? Why do we even need a factory? The difference and the reason why we need the factory is this. Now, let's take, for example, I'm going to change this app value. I'm going to create a new value service over here. Let's see, I create app dot value. I'm going to call this app name service. And this is going to be a st string, which is contact app. So what I'm going to do is have a separate value for the application name. It's going to be a constant more or less, but I just want to have it as a value that gets injected in multiple other places. I want to decouple this from the app config, app data factory service. All right. So I have this separate. And now when I'm creating this app data factory service, I want this service to use the app name service and get the app name alone, right? I don't want the app name to be over here. I want essentially one service to use another service, okay? Well, how can we do this? Turns out we can. Angular supports dependency injection of a service inside another service. We've done dependency injection of a service inside a controller, right? We pass it as an argument. So we can actually pass one service into another service. So here I have the app data factory service, which is going to be this function. This function, let's say, depends on the app name service. Well, then I can actually inject app name service into the app data factory service function. All right. So what Angular is going to do is it's going to initialize the app name service first. It's going to pass that as an argument to this app data factory service execution. And then once it executes, it's going to take the return value. So now what we can do is I can take this value over here and then use that instead of hard coding the name of the app, all right? So what I'm doing is creating one service for the value. I'm creating one more service for the factory. Let me actually get rid of all these things. We don't need this now. Uh, factory service, which is another function. So this function is taking in as an argument another service, all right? So this is thanks to the factory API. We cannot do this with value because Angular doesn't know that that is a function. It's just the JavaScript interpreter that's going to execute the function. However, in the case of a factory service, Angular is going to execute this. So Angular knows that if you have something added as a dependency, it's going to find that service first and inject it for you. So you can have services depending on other services. That's the magic of the factory function. You cannot do that with value, All right? So now, with this in place, I'm going to take just this service and inject it into the 
both the header controller and the footer controller and now I'm going to assign the name to it. Of course here what I could have done is assign the app name directly but I want to go through the factory service so it's basically the app name service injected into the factory service and the factory service is injected into the controller so you can have that kind of a hierarchy because just like the controller being a function that Angular executes the factory service argument is also going to be a function that Angular executes so it can do the dependency injection. Refresh the page and nothing has changed let me I can let me change the name of the app name service value refresh this now we see this gets updated well this didn't get updated let's see what's going on there the footer seems to have an issue well I was looking at the wrong element here I removed that so angular was not able to find it so I need to use the right service all right let's test this again and there you go it works it's using the new value that I updated in the value service so that's the advantage of a factory service it provides you with a function that lets you construct the object and the side benefit of having a function is you can pass in arguments which are other services and angular is going to dependency inject those into the function and you can use that for your object construction all you need to do is when your function is done you need to return the object whatever it is that you want to associate with your service and angular is going to associate it and dependency inject for whatever needs it in the future